Hey, what's up you guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a bit of a mystery to share with you. Whether or not you believe in extraterrestrial life forms, I think the very strange story of Mr. David Huggins will shock you. I don't think we need any further intro. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so this story centers around a man by the name of David Huggins. Now here's the gag, okay? <laughs> David claims that at the age of 17, he lost his virginity to a female extraterrestrial life form. He stated in his documentary, Love and Saucers, which is where I got all this information, by the way, so it's very credible. He had been experiencing extraterrestrial encounters from the ages of eight, even till now to this day. But before we dive into alien sex and very strange encounters, I think we first need to to take it all the way back to the beginning. David Huggins grew up on a farm in rural Georgia with his parents, his brother, and a sister. He described his hometown to be quote-unquote kind of weird. <laughs> One day in 1952 when David was just eight years old, he remembers his first experience with an extraterrestrial life form. He was sitting under a tree when he heard a voice say, David, behind you. When he turned around, he said that he saw a little hairy guy walking straight towards him. He claims that the being had very bright, vibrant, yellow eyes. Since that day, Huggins claims to have had over a hundred encounters with the extraterrestrial. But I think it's pretty safe to say that one of his most memorable encounters was when he lost his virginity. In 1961, David was taking a walk in the woods when he saw a woman sitting under a tree. Suddenly she gets up and starts walking towards him. And he says, and I quote, I became very aroused sexually. I couldn't get my pants down fast enough. I fall on the ground and I'm lying there and she's looking at me and I reach my climax, which was quite painful actually. It was very intense. And then I'm looking in her eyes and I pass out. Virginity lost. What a quote. So let's uh, get a little deeper, okay? Later in the film, David stated that he saw different types of life forms and he described them as follows. The first one is the hairy guy, which is the first being that he had ever encountered, the one with very bright, vibrant yellow eyes. He also claims that the that hairy guy looked like a Sasquatch, apparently. I don't know. The next being that he saw was very tall and thin and he had a little like knob at the end of his head. He thinks that this was the leader of the group. He was always very authoritative. He looked like he was very powerful, like he was in charge, like he ran the game, you know? Then there were the little gray guys, which look like the typical aliens that we all think of, which is interesting. We all think of aliens to look like that and he says that he saw them but uh, he claims that these alien uh, life forms gave off the impression that they were workers. They were more like helpers. They were sort of like minions but just with alien heads, you know? Then there was this insect being. He describes him like a praying mantis. He looked like a praying mantis. The one thing that I do distinctly remember is that every time he, David, would have sex with an alien um, life form, the insect being would be there the entire time. I don't know if that was his duty, but his duty was like to watch the nasty or something, but that was what the insect being was made to do, apparently. Then there's Crescent, and that is the name which he gave his lover who took his virginity. So Crescent is very important, and um, she's a pretty significant part of David's life. So with that being said, let's, let's get to know a little bit more about Crescent, shall we? He described his relationship with Crescent as warm, friendly, and a little strange. A little, I mean David. <laughs> David. <laughs> That's not the statement, honey. <laughs> when describing her, he said that there was something very beautiful and lovely about her. She had a very nice body. The only thing that was different about her was that she had very long fingernails and she had these very large eyes and her face was very pale. What I found to be actually quite interesting was that if you look at Crescent's body, she has the head of an alien and the body of a female human, which would make her a hybrid. So if you think about it, that means that Crescent's mother or father would have had to have sex with a human being, which means that David might not be the only person to have experienced encounters with these aliens and have been seduced by an extraterrestrial. Are you weirded out yet? Because baby, <laughs> there's more, okay, there's more. Stick around, okay? At the age of 19, David left his parents' house in Georgia to move to New York City. When David left, 
the beans left with him. During this time, he claims to have had very weird and vivid dreams that didn't really make sense to him, but every time just before he would wake up, he would have this reoccurring thought in his head and he knew that it was the aliens communicating with him they would always say we'll be back tonight we'll be back tonight but he had no recollection of them ever visiting him so he thought he was like kind of going crazy but i don't think that he was going crazy because in 1966 <laughs> he uh discussed other sexual encounters that he had with Crescent. He said that she would always be on top doing the work, you know? And that was because he said that every time that they had intercourse that his body would become paralyzed. So he was just like, just taking the, just taking it, you know, just taking it. And, um, <laughs> but here's the real tea, okay? He stated that he also had sex with other alien beings. He said that the other alien women were very strong and tall beings and David just really got all the bitches, you know? Like all the E.T. bitches, he got them. He be getting that shit, you know? Crescent wasn't enough for you, huh? I don't know, men, you know? They just they just can't even with even with aliens they just can't have one in 1967 david said that crescent showed up from like a portal like place in the wall she was coming from their universe which he would refer to as their she's frantically screaming the baby's dying the baby's dying and david looks at her and he's like what baby what are you talking about and she's like your baby and he's like my baby and she's like your baby and he was like well i gotta go see my baby let me go see my baby let me help my baby and she's like mm -mm, you ain't allowed up in the other extraterrestrial universe and he's like my baby is dying and i can't see my child and she's like all right you know what I'm gonna let this slide. So then he goes to the bed, he knocks out. When he comes to, he's in the other universe. There, if you will. So when he wakes up from his, you know, unconsciousness, Crescent is standing in front of him. She's holding the baby. The baby's not moving, not breathing. I don't know, I don't know if it's dead, but it's just not moving. David goes over there, touches the baby. The baby's like, <gasps> and then the baby's alive. The baby's well. And <laughs> so then once all the aliens see this, they're like, whoa, dude, you need to see something else then. If you, if you got these powers, come with us. And so um, I think the leader, the guy with like the little knob on his head, takes him to another room in their spaceship. I don't know. So when they open the door, David is looking around and there's all these babies everywhere, like tons, hundreds of babies alien babies everywhere they're all sick or they're dying they're not i don't know they're not well so david's looking around like just overwhelmed he's like whose kids are these and the guy just looks at him he's like <laughs> you and david's like what that's a trip imagine imagine that having all those babies but anyway so he ends up touching them all and apparently saving them all after he came back to earth he felt very bad about the whole situation he felt like he didn't save his babies he felt like he killed them i don't know so he felt really guilty about everything the aliens were like okay look uh, we're gonna let you paint we're gonna let you paint everything you remember all your experiences and so he did. He was like, I'm gonna paint this shit and I'm gonna make it everything that I've seen, everything that I remember. And it made him feel better. I guess it like eased his, his conscience a little bit and he felt good about the situation. Now David had so many paintings of all his memories that he got them illustrated into a book. And that book is called Love in an Alien Purgatory, The Life and Fantastic Art of David Huggins. Whatever your opinion is on David, I think that uh, he seems to be pretty genuine. He doesn't seem to be talking about his experience because he wants fame or he wants money, he wants attention from the media. I really think that he's just genuinely trying to get his story out there and his experience. And I think he's trying to kind of connect with more people that have had the same similar experiences. I just thought that I would mention that he specifically said, I have never asked anyone to believe a word I say because I know I can never prove it. I just hope that you'll think about it. He does seem to be very genuine if you're asking my opinion on it. There are so many galaxies and so many planets. I don't wanna say nothing, but like everyone knows that like, we think that, you know, our government is hiding stuff from us or like, not the government, maybe it's like 
hire people with more knowledge. Don't know who has more knowledge than the government. But, um, I feel like there are aliens. It might not be the aliens that we have grown up seeing like how they have been depicted. I'm not saying, oh yeah, there has to be. I'm just saying that it's very possible. It's very likely that, that that's a thing. And if it is a thing, then a variety of people would have had to have some encounter, some experiences with these beings. I mean, think what you want, homegirl, but I don't know. I think he's being very genuine. Um, I think he just wants to get his story out there. I'm just here to share the message, you know? <laughs> I think the entire story is very interesting, so if you want to see the documentary that I'm talking about, Love and Saucers, I will leave links down below to where you can go ahead and check them out. You do have to rent them or buy them, but they're pretty cheap. They're like three bucks to rent. So if you want to go rent that, check it out. I'll leave links down below. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. Make sure to subscribe down below because I post new videos every single week. Also make sure to hit that notification bell to be notified every single time I upload. You guys, you just, you gotta be looking up all the time, okay? You can't be looking down because you might miss something. You might miss like a UFO flying by. You might miss something crazy. Okay, you might miss a little gray guy coming down from the sky. Keep a lookout. Keep an eye on your surroundings. As always, I love you guys very much and I will see you on the next one. Bye!